Okay, so damped harmonic oscillation. Uh, we've looked at simple harmonic oscillation. This is where we had a spring mass system. So you had a spring attached to a mass and you pull the mass down and let it go and it goes up and down and this creates a sinusoidal motion. And we had uh, a model that we used for that one. Uh, what we're gonna look at is damped harmonic oscillation. So what does damping mean? Damping means friction. And of course, if you think about it in real life, this spring mass system is not gonna vibrate forever and ever and ever. The size of the oscillations will go down as friction uses up some of the energy. And so we need to figure out how to model that. There are two different types of models we could use to set that up. One model looks like this, where this sign could either be a sine or a cosine term. Um, and another model looks like this. Both of these are equivalent. There's a way of making these two the same. It just depends on what textbook you're looking at. Um, the, um, I really don't have a strong preference. My minor preference is for this one, just because it's uh, the exponential function is a very common function that we use in mathematics. But it's up to you. Uh, whichever one you like, it's fine. So you can see that there's some terms here that are familiar. This plus k term, we used to be write, uh, we used to write this as plus d. That's for the midline. Uh, we have our capital B, which is related to the period, but it's not actually the period. And then we have our, what used to be the amplitude. It used to be just an A, but now we have this extra exponential term. And so the question is, well, what does that exponential term do? Well, in order to get exponential decay, first of all, we need to have here that B is either between zero and one, or if you're using the exponential notation here, you're gonna have to have your R be less than zero, and that would be exponential decay. And we're going to look at some graphs of this to sort of see how this plays, uh, how this affects the graphs in order to understand this a little bit better. Okay, so here we are in Desmos. Uh, I've set up the model here, a e to the rx times sine of capital B times x plus k. Uh, so the value of a is our usual amplitude. So as it gets bigger, the amplitude gets bigger. As a gets smaller, it gets smaller. Uh, our capital B here is, again, affecting the period. So as capital B goes up, the period goes down. K is the midline, and it goes up and down like this. And now the only new term we have to look at is this R term. So this R is between negative 1 and 0 right now. As I start to make it a little bit negative, you can start to see the effect of the decay. And in fact, what we can do is we can create what's known as the envelope by graphing the a e to the rx and the negative a e to the rx terms, you can see that the uh, envelope is sort of tracking the size of the oscillations as time goes forward. Um, if we make it decay faster, then it shrinks down faster. And you can see eventually, it essentially stops moving down here. Um, the midline can still go up and down and everything moves together. Uh, but the important thing here is that this exponential decay part controls the size of the oscillations. Okay, so let's look at example four from the book in this section, section 7.4. Uh, a spring with natural length of 20 feet is pulled back six feet and released. It oscillates once every two seconds. Its amplitude decreases 20% each second. Find a function that models the position of the spring t seconds after being released. Take a moment and just sort of think about the bits of information and see if you can put it together into our model. Okay, well, what is our model? Um, it doesn't matter which one we use. I'm going to use the f of t is equal to a, b to the t. Um, use a cosine term. The reason why I'm using cosine term is because we are starting off stretched out, and so we know the cosine starts at its max and min as opposed to the sine function, which starts in the middle. So we now have this information. This is our, or we have at least this model. What is the bits of information that we have? We have the natural length. is 20 feet. We have that the amplitude, let's see, that have released uh, stretched by six feet. We have that the uh, oscillates every two seconds, once every two seconds. And then we have that the amplitude decreases twenty percent per second. 
Now, each of these bits of information help feed us, uh, help give us information to feed into our model. You might recognize here that the stretch six feet and released. Um, <clears throat> this is some sort of our initial, this is our initial condition that affects our uh, exponential term up here. Um, same thing with this, the amplitude decreasing 20% per second. So these are both related to the uh, amplitude. In this case, B, A, B to the T. The oscillates once every two seconds. This affects our B term, which is our, um, our, this is our oscillation speed, which relates to the B term. It changes the period as well. And then the natural length, this is our midline. This is the position it would be in if there's no vibration at all. So you can see that a lot of the bits and pieces fit together the way they fit together in the past. We now just have a little bit more work to do to uh, bring the whole model together. So the first thing, stretch six feet and released. Well, that's this thing right here. So when t is equal to zero, you know that uh, this thing, a, b to the t, is just a. And so that a is going to be six. That's going to be the amount of stretch that it is at time t equals zero. <clears throat> This part right here, the amplitude de decreases 20% per second. Now, there are lots of ways of thinking about this one. Um, you could just sort of write down the answer if you're familiar with what's going on. If you're not familiar with what's going on, basically what you can do is you can turn this into something, instead of having this abstract quantity here, just make it a real quantity. T equals one. If it's the case that after one second, it's lost 20% of the amplitude and it started at six feet, We have 80% left of this original six foot length is the amplitude. And you can do this calculation, it turns out to be 4.8 feet. And so A, <clears throat> excuse me, A, B to the first power is equal to 4.8 feet. And since we know what A is equal to, we could actually plug this in and solve for B. B to the first here is just B. So as it turns out, B is equal to zero uh, point 0.8. And that 0 0.8 is the same as the 80% here, and so that's a short way of doing it once you recognize that that's how it works. But 20% uh, per second corresponds to B, B equal to 0 0.8. Um, oscillates once every two seconds. That gives us our value of capital B. And so the value of capital B is going to be, well, remember that B is equal to 2 pi over the period. We know that the period is uh, two seconds, and so b is going to be equal to, well, two pi over two, which is pi. The midline, of course, is midline is just the value of 20 up here, and so we can write down our model all together. f of t is equal to our a, which is six, times b, which is 0 0.8 raised to the t power, cosine of capital B, pi t, plus 20, and the units here are feet. And so this is our model for, um, for this vibration. This is example number four. Example five is very similar to example four, uh, so I'll let you work through that on your own. It's the same idea as before, you just have to think through the same logic that we set up. If you have any problems with that, let me know.